The Glintstone Sorcerers number few in the Land of Shadow. In fact, they're really only found in Castle Ensis, along with Akarian Knight and Rolana, the Twin Moon Knight. They don't really make their presence known outside of this area, save for a rise to the northeast, which once belonged to a sorcerer known as Rabbath. Upon inspecting this place, we are likely to spy a church in the distance. If we make our way there, we learn that this is known as Manus Meter, and it seems the only inhabitants of this place are a knight in dark armor known as Yolan and a glintstone sorcerer, Emir. This man is very cordial with our tarnished, welcoming us to this place and asking us to take on a quest for him, one that will see us travel across the Land of Shadow and uncover a story taking us back to the earliest days of the Lands Between. However, Count Emir does not teach us this history out of the kindness of his heart. He has his own motivations, and with a little help from our tarnished, he believes his dreams can be fully realized. Today, we discuss Count Emir and his aspirations of motherhood. But before getting started, I wanted to mention that today I'm joined by Coleslaw, a creator just getting started in the Elden Ring space, who gives life advice over Elden Ring gameplay. Coleslaw will be reading all of our item descriptions for this video, so make sure you check out the link to his channel in the description below. Welcome back to Elden Lore, our weekly series where we investigate the monsters, locations, and mothers of the Lands Between and the Land of Shadows. Whether this is your first time finding the channel or you've been with us from the beginning, thanks for spending some time with us today. We love digging through this game and bringing you the stories of the characters you want explored, so feel free to let us know what you'd like us to look into next. We also have a Discord where our community comes together to discuss their lore theories, builds, and favorite aspects of the FromSoft universe. If you end up enjoying this look at the story and motivations of Count Emir, please consider subscribing to the channel. But even if you don't, your viewership is always enough for us. With that said, let's get back to the story of the Glintstone Sorcerer, who aspired to be a mother. When we first meet Count Emir, he welcomes us with open arms. We don't often receive visitors. I am Emir. Welcome to Manus Meta. It is a pleasure to have you. In lands so forsaken as these, chance encounters are precious indeed. Seeing that we have convened here on this day, allow me to mark the occasion with a modest offering. The map I gave you charts the site of a hallowed ruin. It is said that after sounding the hanging bell there, one's fate will be guided by the stars. I only wish to be of service, to help those who fight for their purpose. I'm not mistaken, am I? I can see it in your eyes. You are a fighter, are you not? Though he wears a garb unfamiliar to us, he speaks of fate guided by the stars, which clues us into his standing as a glintstone sorcerer. You could be forgiven for thinking this interaction is much more reminiscent of Topes rather than Selen, with Emir offering to help us in whatever meager way he can. If we look at the whole laden necklace he's handed us, we learn what it is. A pale blue necklace made from a thin, elongated stone hollowed out from the inside. It was a teaching of Khan Emir. The fate of the one who sounds the hanging bell will be guided by the stars. It seems he's looking for a warrior with enough resolve to sound the bell, though we don't yet know why. If we speak with him again after our introduction, Emir will offer to teach us various sorceries. Something the matter? I've given you a map to the hallowed ruin? Oh, I suppose you expect a lesson of me, do you? I know the feeling. Those with purpose are nothing if not ravenous. For power. For truth. Among these sorceries are Karian Phalanx, Karian Retaliation, and Miriam's Vanishing. Skills not just any Glintstone sorcerer would know. Apparently Emir is quite powerful, and more knowledgeable than most. We can ask him about sorcery, and he will tell us something we wouldn't expect to hear from anyone we meet at the Academy. I am 
A glintstone, sorcerer. We study the stars and examine the life therein. Are you familiar with our findings? Long ago, we began as stardust, born of a great rupture far across the skies. We too are children of the greater will. Is that not divine? Is that not sublime? And yet, none can fathom its implications. Its utter brilliance. Unlike other sorcerers who study the cosmos to find the knowledge of the stars, those that fought against the Golden Order before being brought into the fold, Emir sees the connection between the stars and the greater will itself. If we advance his quest further, he will offer new sorceries, not known to any of the inhabitants of the Lands Between, but we'll discuss these a bit later. Before ringing the first bell, there are a few more interactions we can have with Emir, one in which he refers to someone unseen living in the church. Yes. Do mind your feet around the church. You wouldn't want to hurt the little boy. He will also tell us about his knight, Yolan, if we've taken the time to speak with her. You met Yolan? Well, I hope that she behaved, at least. The poor girl has overcome grave misfortune. Her tongue can be sharp at the best of times, but don't think that makes her a bad person. <laughs> it's no surprise her little sister, too, has a heart of gold. We'll dive into the implications of the relationship between Emir and Yolan later. But needless to say, while Emir has not yet lied to us, he isn't being entirely truthful. The last interaction we have a chance of seeing before the first bell rings finds Ymir holding a tiny finger creeper, and he says, Why, you poor thing. Another bad dream, Yuri. Put that rotten thing out of your mind. That tangled mess can't hurt you. Those who watched our previous video on Metter know that the tangled mess being referred to here is actually the Mother of Fingers. But at this point, we have no context, and it seems as though Ymir may be a bit more unhinged than we first thought. After blowing the bell at the finger ruins of Rhea, Emir will share more of his thoughts with us and give us a symbol of his trust. Oh, there you are. The exalted timbre of the bell has reached these ears of mine. Gracious, the starry sky is wondrous tonight indeed. Only your fate shines brighter. Now, these are for you. Think nothing of it. I have made my decision to be of help. May the gleaming stars guide you evermore. The Count gives us the talisman, Beloved Stardust. A talisman depicting a wizened hand gently gripping a glintstone. Count Emir was known for his recitations. One need only envision the romance of the stars above, with adoration for stardust in one's heart to become a great sorcerer. Do so, and you will know love. So it seems Emir was once known very well amongst Glenstone sorcerers. This raises the question, how did he end up sequestered at Manus Metter? Before leaving to find the next finger ruins dictated by the map he's given us, we can ask Emir a couple of questions. If we ask him about the nature of the world, he tells us, Hear that you have borne witness to the whole of it. The conceits, the hypocrisy of the world built upon the earth tree. The follies of men. Their bitter suffering. Is there no hope for redemption? The answer, sadly, is clear. There never was any hope. They were each of them defective. Unhinged from the start. Marika herself. And the fingers that guided her. And this is what troubles me. No matter our efforts, if the roots are rotten, then we have little recourse. Emir is speaking in riddles. He has something he wants to share with us, but he's not quite ready to tell us everything. We can also ask about Mikola, and he will say, Young Mikola saw things for what they were. He knew that his bloodline was tainted, his roots mired in madness, 
A tragedy, if ever there was one. That he would feel compelled to renounce everything. When the blame lay squarely with the mother. It's unknown whether he spoke directly with Mikola, or if word of this Empyrean made its way to him. But I'd venture to guess they've spoken. And when they did, Emir was much less cryptic with the young demigod than he is with us. Again, if we choose to visit the church before completing our task, we can find additional dialogues with Emir. Upon spawning at the site of Grace and walking in, we can see his throne is empty, and we can explore outside, where we find a graveyard, and Emir weeping by a gravestone. Forgive me, I fail you. Fail to birth you whole. I was not ready to be your mother, but I can still stay here. Nice and close. For now, my dear, sleep soundly. I will return shortly. Please, allow the two of us a moment alone. What could he mean by this? How could this man become a mother? Are the graves piled nearly on top of each other outside this church, all of his failed children? Time will tell, but for now, we can make our way back to his throne, where we're able to trigger a mechanism that will take us below the church, to a ruin much like the one we just visited, where a giant bell waits for the whole laden necklace to be blown. However, as we approach, we find that we are not alone. A sword hand of night wearing identical armor to Yolan, known as Anna, attacks us with bladed hands, and we must do battle with her in order to survive. If we ask Emir about this place and the person we fought afterward, he says, Did you espy something unsightly, perchance? Well, put it out of your mind. The stars will reveal the truth in time. Free yourself of any misconceptions, lest they bring woe upon the both of us. If ever we thought we could trust Emir before this point, surely that notion has left us. After blowing the bell at the finger ruins of Dio, hidden amongst the lands of the shaman where Marika was born, Emir will speak with us again. Hello there. I heard another sound, colored by your essence. <laughs> Simply exhilarating, I must say. The stars are dark tonight. But rest assured, this is no ill omen. On the contrary, I believe that this portends a magnificent starry cascade. Now, take this. My final gift to you. May you join the glimmering stars above. If you made your way underground once already, you know where this third map is leading you. But before you make your way down again, there's still more we can learn from Emir. If we ask him about the nature of the world again, he expounds on his previous thoughts. Call what I said, that Marika and the fingers that guided her were unsound from the start. Well, the truth lies deeper still. It is their mother who is damaged and unhinged. The fingers are but unripe children, victims in their own right. We all need a mother, do we not? A new mother, a true mother who will not give birth to further malady. With what we've seen of Ymir so far, it seems as though he wants to be the mother of the fingers and finger creepers, able to birth them without malady, healthier, and possibly connected to the greater will themselves. It's at this point we can learn more spells from Emir. Glintstone Nails is a... Glintstone Sorcery of Count Emir, High Priest. One of the finger sorceries said to have been discovered in a hollow ruin. Count Emir boasts that this is mere child's play, an echo of a greater truth. The enemies found in the finger ruins cast these relentless nails as we fight our way to the bell so we already know how annoying this sorcery can be. We can also learn Fleeting Microcosm. A finger sorcery of Count Emir, High Priest, one of the secret hollowed rites. 
conjures an image of a microcosm at the foe's feet that pulses with a single wave before disappearing in a burst. The broken and discarded are fully willing to cling to fleeting simulacra, earning them some modicum of sympathy. The microcosm is essentially the tool used by Metter, the mother of fingers, to speak with the greater will before its connection was severed. So this sorcery is essentially creating a sort of makeshift copy of this tool, though it cannot match the original's power, and is useless for the purpose of communication. That said, it seems as though Emir has been studying, preparing, making himself a simulacrum of the mother of fingers in an attempt to take her place. Upon making our way to the final bell, ringing it, and defeating the Mother of Fingers, we can enter Manus Meadow again. But there is no warm welcome waiting for us. No proud teacher praising our conquest over the damaged and unhinged Mother. Instead, we are attacked by Yolan, who claims we have wounded Emir irreparably, and he now wants us dead. I plan on exploring Yolan in another video, so I won't dive into this too deeply. But it's fair to assume this was a lie told to her by the Count, as up to this point, we've essentially brought his plan to fruition, and now that our work is done, he simply wishes to be rid of us. After defeating Yolan, Emir faces us, wielding the maternal staff and wearing the finger robe. He yells at us, Shining star, grant me a mother's strength. Look here. At my fingers, I will be the true mother, and I will be the only mother. He then attacks with all of his might, casting sorceries and birthing finger creepers that will attack us on sight. Upon defeating him, he says, I desired to be your mother. Now that this is over, we're left with the question, what just happened? The answer to this lies in Emir's armor and weapon, along with the sorcery, cherishing fingers. The High Priest hat tells us it is... The hat of Khan Emir, High Priest. The circular design at the top represents the greater will and its lightless abyss. Though Khan Emir instructed Rolana in the sorcerer's arts, he abandoned his allegiance to the moon, it was merely the closest of the celestial bodies, nothing more. This outlines not only that Emir held a deeper understanding of the greater will, but that he was easily able to cast aside his place in the Karian hierarchy after learning these deeper truths. The only thing the High Priest robe tells us that's of any interest is that it conceals the abundance of squirming beneath. But if we alter this item, we receive the finger robe, which is described as the Robe of Count Emir, High Priest. This robe is the image of his fervent desire having broken free, laying bare his greatest wish. I will be the true mother. My fingers will grant us redemption. So it seems that defeating Metter was the last piece of Emir's plan, because after this he's able to birth finger creepers, and the finger robe shows how they were literally bursting from his body, just as they did with Metter. This also lays out his belief that the fingers he would birth would lead to some kind of salvation for the lands between, that the broken fingers we encounter are unable to make manifest. Lastly, Emir's weapon, the maternal staff, shows how he's planning to do things differently from Metter. Staff of Count Emir, who made himself a mother of fingers, carried for want of tail fingers of his own. The crystal ball, though representative of a microcosm, would not receive any sign. This staff is almost identical to the Staff of the Great Beyond, which we can gain through Metter's Remembrance, with the distinct difference that the microcosm atop the staff has no color, and it comes with no skill. Emir's staff could not communicate with the Greater Will, which means the fingers would be following his instructions directly. He believed it was his place to guide the fingers and save the world the way he saw fit. Surely Emir cared for the fingers, but ultimately, they were his means of achieving salvation by bringing about a world he personally envisioned. And surely, this man is as flawed as any other, perhaps even as flawed as Meta herself. 
After the final battle with Emir, we can find the sorcery cherishing Fingers in the graveyard, where he buried the failed births of Fingers before we defeated Metter. A Finger Sorcery of Kanemir, Aspiring Mother of Fingers The dear Fingers look after their mother, or perhaps that's merely what the mother wishes to believe. One implication of this description is that the Fingers Emir created were unlike those that spawned from Metter. His were incomplete and lacked their own will. They didn't defend their mother because they loved him, but rather because they would simply follow any order given. Whether or not Emir truly knew this is up for debate, but the ruthless nature of this man leads me to believe it would not matter to him if this were the case. I feel confident referring to him as ruthless due to his involvement with Yolan and Anna, which is hinted at in their spirit ashes. Spirits of two sword hands of night, one of them being possessed by Count Emir's doll, Anna. Together, Jolan's sword and Anna's claws are as bottomless black, and penetrate the enemy's guard. Jolan and Anna were born in a cold, dark jail, where they were raised, deprived of light, to be sword hands of night. Thus they were cultivated to become the most terrifying masters of their blade, though the burden of the deed left their hearts frail and pliant. As mentioned before, I'm going to dedicate an entire video to the sword hands of night, but for now, I will simply say that I believe the reason these sisters were raised deprived of light is due to the machinations of Count Emir himself. And the only reason I see for Anna to be made into the doll we find at Roboth's Rise is that she questioned her master, and Emir acted accordingly. Count Emir wished to become a mother of fingers, and while his true motivations for doing so never truly come to light, we know that in his twisted mind, he believed this would somehow lead to the salvation of the lands between. Say what you will of his methods, at the core, he did see the truth of the Golden Order, that it was broken from the very start, and that not a single person in power was capable of truly putting the world right. It's a fine line to ride, writing a character who's so deeply untrustworthy, but also shares harsh truths with us that cannot be denied. And I think FromSoft did this wonderfully with Ymir. While he believed he and the Fingers could save the world, the madness he displayed upon meeting us after the death of Metter made it clear that we needed to put a stop to him. Unfortunately, poor Yuri will have to fend for himself, as the birthing of new Fingers has been put to an end, permanently. After all, with Metter fled into the cosmos and Emir dead by our hand, there are no mothers left in these lands to hold the young Fingers and guide them towards some kind of future. Thank you for joining us for this exploration of Count Emir, the would-be mother of fingers. And thanks again to Coleslaw for reading this week's item descriptions. Be sure to check out his channel in the description below. Do you believe Emir's intentions were noble? Or did he simply want to see his vision for the world come to fruition? Some speculate that Yuri is the name of Emir's late son, do you believe he's trying to recreate his family by becoming the Mother of Fingers? Why was he unable to properly birth Finger Creepers before we defeated Metter? Are you looking forward to our video on Yolan and Anna? Let us know your thoughts and theories in the comments below. Don't forget to like, subscribe, hit the bell, and set notifications to all, so you never miss out on any of our lore dives. We look forward to seeing you again for more. Elden Lore.